Welcome to Advent Worship at Westminster and to our inclusive family of faith. We particularly welcome our visitors and those joining us on YouTube. Watch and wait for Christ's coming. Light the candles of hope, peace, joy, and love, remembering the promises of God with prayer. We light this candle in hope. Hear God's promise of hope from Isaiah 2, 2 through 4. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many people shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, that we may walk in his path. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction, and the world and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations, and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. Let us pray. Faithful God, out of war's chaos, you bring the order of peace. Renew us in hope that we may work forward toward Christ's advent of peace among all nations.
Our gospel reading this morning comes from Matthew 16, verses 13 through 20. Listen to this. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, He asked His disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Jesus said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then Jesus sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that He was the Messiah. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Several years ago, I had the privilege of officiating a friend's wedding. The couple was nominally Catholic, but not actively involved in a church. So they asked me to marry them at Las Colinas Country Club. I happily agreed. Lee and I arrived at the rehearsal in plenty of time, and we were chatting with the family as everyone gathered together. The bride's mother called the groom's grandmother over to introduce me. With a big smile on her face, she said, This is the minister who will be doing the wedding tomorrow. The grandmother, an elegant southern woman in pearls, smiled broadly as she reached out to shake Lee's hand. (laughs) It's so nice to meet you, she said. True to form, Lee started laughing and pointed to me as, in fact, the minister. Oh, the grandmother said, politely covering her surprise. I've heard they let women be ministers these days. The southern grandmother from a Catholic family heard the word minister and instantly expectations and a certain image formed in her head. And that image did not look like me. A lot of people are quite surprised to find out what my title is since most churches in America don't have a woman, much less a young woman, as their pastor. As I meet new people and tell them my title, I can see the gears turning in their heads as they put me in a new category, as they change their expectations of me. Titles have power to shape status and identity. Titles instantly convey power and prestige or the lack thereof. Titles help us put people in certain boxes with certain expectations. Titles shape how we interact with each other and what we wait and watch for. This morning, we start the season of Advent, our four-week journey of preparation, of waiting and watching for Jesus Christ to be born into the world once more. Last year, we dedicated our beautiful new Advent pyramids made by our own Sandra Morris, and we introduced the Messiah banner this morning. Many liturgical-minded folks are shifting from purple to blue for Advent for a number of reasons that range from the technical, to distinguish it from Lent, to the theological. One of my favorite authors, Diana Butler Bass, wrote a beautiful article about Blue Advent this last week. Advent is of a different spiritual hue, she says. It is a time of waiting, of expectation, of hope in the darkness. Blue is the color of the sky right before dawn, that time when the deepest dark is just infused with hints of light. 
Blue holds the promise that the sun will rise and that even after the bleakest, coldest, longest night, the light will break forth as the new day arrives. Blue is the color of hope. Advent is our time of hopeful waiting. And in the next few weeks, we'll explore who exactly we are hoping and waiting for. Tying in with our Advent Bible study on Wednesday nights, we'll be looking at different royal titles for Jesus, pulled mainly from Isaiah. Names for the Messiah, including Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace, and Emmanuel. But before we jump into names for the Messiah, the first title I thought we should talk about is Messiah itself. In this morning's Gospel story from Matthew, Jesus asked two questions of the disciples. Who do they say that I am? And who do you say that I am? Peter answers the second question with a royal title. You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus is delighted to hear His confession of faith. That in that moment, Peter understood who he really is. Jesus then declares that the church will be built on the rock of this faith and testimony. And Jesus orders the disciples to tell no one just yet that He is indeed the long-awaited Messiah. Messiah is the Hebrew word for anointed one. Translated into Greek, Messiah is Christos, Christ. Christ is not, in fact, Jesus' last name. That was probably more like Joseph's son. But, in fact, Christ is a royal title. For first century Jews, Messiah Christ is the title for the long-awaited ruler, the descendant of King David, who would overthrow the Roman oppression and free the Jewish people once more. From the very beginning of Matthew's Gospel, he offers clues that Jesus is the Messiah. Take the birth narrative, for instance. It connects Jesus as a descendant of David, born in the town of Bethlehem, like the prophets claimed, and treated like a king as the Magi, the wise ones, worship Him with royal gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Throughout His life, death, and resurrection, Matthew continues to build the case that Jesus indeed is the Messiah, anointed by the Spirit to lead the people of Israel as their King and Priest. Scholar Marcus Borg unpacks the meaning of Messiah in the Gospels. The understanding of what the Messiah would be like was fluid in first century Judaism. Different groups had different expectations. But all who longed on the Messiah agreed on two features. He would be anointed by the Spirit of God. And He would be the decisive figure in Israel's history. The Messiah would usher in God's future, which God intended for Israel and the world. So when Peter confesses that Jesus was the Messiah, there were very specific expectations about what that title would mean based on generations of praying, listening, discernment, and prophecy. And Peter's people, they were ready for God's future. For Israel, his people, they were in desperate need of hope as they lived under the Roman oppression. They were waiting for this promised gift, the days that are surely coming, waiting to be delivered from their suffering. They were waiting for a new leader, one who would be different from the other leaders, who would lift them up and free them once more. They were hoping for a Messiah who would crush the Roman powers and build up Israel like it used to be. To reign on an earthly throne with power and might and wealth. Jesus as the Messiah in one way fulfilled those expectations as 
He was anointed by the Spirit of God in his baptism. And he certainly was decisive in Israel's history as well as the rest of the world. Jesus as the Messiah means that he functioned as king and priest of the people. And yet Jesus turned the many of those expectations upside down with his birth, life, death, and resurrection. Jesus does not come with military or political power. He is not born into a rich and powerful family. He is not the Messiah that people expected. He is not the new king in the way people thought. He was something much, much more. Jesus took the hopes and dreams and expectations of a Messiah and doubled down. Not only delivering Israel, but also freeing the Gentiles, expanding God's reach and God's kingdom. He saved the people from something much bigger than Rome. He saved us from the powers of sin and death. We have a bit of an advantage on Peter and the other disciples, for we know the end of this story. The empty tomb that leads to eternal life. We are in fact not first century Jews living in the ancient Near East. We don't have the prophetic expectations built up in our collective minds and hearts. And most of us don't have the bloodlines to be part of Israel. So what does it mean for us today to confess that Jesus is the Messiah, the Christ? What does it mean for 21st century Christians to claim this ancient title For Jesus of Nazareth, Son of Joseph, Son of David, and Son of the living God. Maybe we start with the question Jesus asked. How would you answer His questions today? Who do they say that I am? And who do you say that I am? Would you echo Peter and say you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God, the One who has come to save us? Knowing that we have been saved eternally by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, I wonder, what do we need saving from still? Do we actually let Jesus into our lives enough to experience His salvation? Or do we try to do everything on our own? Can we admit that we need salvation and deliverance that is beyond our own control and what we can earn? Is Jesus the Messiah just in this sanctuary a couple hours a week or every day of your life? Do we too often rely on earthly powers for deliverance instead of divine? Jesus as Messiah means that we can be saved from ourselves. Jesus as Messiah today means that we can be saved again and again. Saved from our own tendency to linger in the hopeless despair. Jesus as Messiah means that salvation is built upon His values and not the world's. The values of peace, justice, and righteousness. Jesus as Messiah means that we can be delivered from the powers of consumerism and individualism. From the powers of racism and sexism from the powers of xenophobia and homophobia. Jesus as Messiah means that the work of salvation is ongoing. We have a partner in the Anointed One as we work to bear Jesus into the world. And Jesus as Messiah means that we have a foundation for hope. For the Messiah has come once and He is sure to come again. Jesus as Messiah means that though the shadows may be long, the sky will turn blue, and sunrise will break through. In our Advent waiting, watching for light in the darkness, we can have hope because of who the Messiah is. Someone who will save us from the worst parts of ourselves. Someone who will deliver us from anxiety and depression and anger and arrogance. Someone who will save us and shape us into saints worthy of bearing God into the world. 
after the wedding of this Catholic couple in Las Colinas. The grandmother of the groom graciously approached me and complimented me on the service. I will probably never get a chance to see her again, but maybe, just maybe, the image of minister expanded in her heart and mind to include even me. With her humility, openness, and grace, I wonder, how will God expand this vision of Messiah to us? How will our understanding of Jesus the Christ deepen this Advent season? In what hidden corners of our hearts will we let Him be born again? Friends, this is the good news of Advent and every season. Jesus is the Messiah, the Christ. The One who has come to bring God's future into the present. The Anointed One who shares the Spirit with the church built on the rock. Let us give thanks that the Messiah exceeds all our expectations. Let us wake up our hearts to watch and wait for Jesus the Christ once more. Amen.